Hello, epic viewers from around the world. Prepare to indulge in experiencing sheer bliss, because today another riveting, captivating, stellar unboxing video is about to be brought to fruition. What items will I be unboxing? What items will I be opening? Without further delay, without further procrastination, allow me to elicit the box. What items are coppiced inside this bulky, hefty, tantrum nifty box? Let's find out. I'm going to demystify that answer to that inquiry right here, right now. So bear with me. It'll only take me billions of picoseconds to extract the items from the box and subsequently flaunt them in front of the camera for you to feast your glorious eyes on. This is the second part part of my unboxing of the Dragon Ball Z action figure lot. If you have yet to check out the first part, then I advise doing so if Dragon Ball Z action figures tickle, tickle your fancy and appeal to your niche interests. If they don't, then desist and abstain from watching that video with all contention upon your niche interests. If you relish the Dragon Ball Z series, then you'll probably want to see me unbox Bardock, his offspring Goku, his rival Frieza, Frieza's henchman, or henchman, Captain Ginyu, and of course, the notorious legendary Super Saiyan Broly. So, implement that decision based on your own volition. Let's move on. We have a plethora of figurines remaining within the lot. We have various body parts of Frieza, perhaps. Some of the appendages may be lying in here. They'll be dormant in the bag. Alrighty, we have first form Frieza. I believe I already own this figurine. This figurine is a duplicate. He came in the lot. The seller wasn't willing to omit to include figures within the lot in order to render a discounted price to me for the lot. In other words, he wasn't willing to remove it from the lot in order to provide me with a substantial discount. So I do consume, I do concede you buying this figurine in order to procure the other figurines within the lot. It's no big deal. I have no major gripes appertaining to this figurine. I would have preferred if his arms could be fully stretched out rather than pre-posed. I would have preferred if he had finger joint articulation. I would have preferred if his head was relegated to a disjoint to allow his head to have greater articulation. I would have preferred if he had a diaphragm joint. I love the fact that his armor can be removed. You can see his muscle tones. I love the spikes protruding out of his helmet or out of his innate default anatomy. I don't like the fact that his hands are semi clenched together. Or his, I don't like the fact that his fingers are somewhat clenched together. Sorry about the blunder. I would have preferred if he had fisted hands. I don't like the fact that he can't perform an angle pivot. At least his tail has some articulation, to say the least. It can't really swivel too much. So, I don't recommend tampering with these figurines. You don't want to loosen their joints. They're over a decade old. This figure was released amid the latter half of the 1990s. Is it the latter half or the later half of the 1990s? Who knows? Let's move on. I don't need to dwell on trivial nonsense. Of course, we have Krillin. He looks like the SH figure arts version of Krillin, although I'm not sure he, if he is. He has ample points of articulation. He's an impressive figurine. He can move his legs outwards and inwards. I love his sculpt. I love his deco. I love his hues. I love his aesthetics. I love his textures and shadings. This is a high quality figurine. His shoulder pads can be adjusted, I believe. Actually, they can't. I thought they could if you press them hard enough, but apparently they can't. So they're fixed. They're mounted to his shoulders, which is not the end of the world because they should be relocated to his shoulders. The shoulder pads shouldn't be anywhere else. His knees and elbows are not double jointed. He lacks an ankle pivot. He lacks a diaphragm joint, but he truly embodies and emulates the appearance of Krillin. So you really can't go wrong purchasing this figurine, especially if you stumble upon him for under $5. He's quite a stellar, stupendous figurine. He's quite remarkable. He has an exquisite design. Of course, he has alternative faces, which I love. You can swap them out at your own discretion. He has a fisted hand in there as well. I'll likely swap out his face and his hands at a later date. In the pending future, not now. Lastly, or actually, we have some more figures, so I retract my previous statement. We have Berter, a member of the Ginyu Force. 
he's marred with scuffs. His um, painting is chipped. A significant amount of painting for his armor has came off, or has come off. His joints are loose. Integrity of his joints has been compromised. This is quite a robust figurine. The only issue is the scuffs and the lack of two-fisted hands. He only has one-fisted hand. He can't perform an ankle pivot. He can't perform an out crunch. He can't ascend or descend his head. He can't rotate his forearms, so his articulation is limited, just like his counterparts, but it's not the end of the world. I guess I can cope with the situation. Let me just finish unboxing the remainder of the lock real quick. And then I can take a hiatus from all these videos. Next we have Piccolo, the stoic noble valiant warrior, the Namek, the Namekian. I love the idea that his shirt is torn. I would have preferred if he had two-fisted hands. His antennas are not protruding out. They may have been severed. I'm not sure they're supposed to be like this or not. Decent figurine. He's practically unscathed. I can't pinpoint any major defects or shortcomings or flaws associated with this figurine. Is this a quintessential version of Piccolo? No, but it's one of the better variants in my opinion. He looks like he's poised for combat. So, that's Piccolo. Next we have Radis, Goku's brother. Is this Goku's twin brother? Who knows? Is this Goku's arch nemesis? Possibly. His scouter cannot be removed. I'm flabbergasted. I'm bewildered. This is quite a novel figurine. This is one of the better figurines. He has two-fisted hands. He can rotate his thighs. He can rotate his calves. He can rotate his forearms. He can rotate his biceps. He can move his arms upwards and downwards. He cannot move them inwards or outwards, nor can he move his legs inwards or outwards. His hair is quite bulky. His joints are somewhat sturdy. His armor seems a bit petty. It could have been upscaled. It could have been ramped up. It could have been a bit sturdier. It could have been enlarged. But this is okay. The scatter cannot be removed. If it could be removed, I would have likely lost it by now. I have a propensity to lose minuscule objects. So that's Radis. I'm not sure if he was churned out by Irwin Toys. I don't think this particular version of Radis was. I know Irwin Toys produced a Radis action figure, which I have, but that is not the one I'm recollecting. This Radis is disparate from other ones. Sure, they are nearly homogeneous to one another, but they have minute nuances and minute differences that distinguish them apart. Here's Jace, likely churned out by Jack Pacific rather than Irwin Toys. Irwin Toys produced their own Jace action figure. Actually, I think this is the one by um, Irwin Toys, not the one by Jack Pacific. So, this is a refined version of Jace. He scales eminently well with the 6 to 7 inch prodigious action figure collection. Jace is supposed to be short. This character is short, but he towers over Goku, Bardock, and Broly. See for yourself. Here's some empirical evidence. He stands roughly four to five inches tall, probably closer to four inches tall. He dwarfs Bardock. See how much taller he is? His height could have been further amplified. I would have preferred if he had articulation in his elbow joints. I would have preferred if he could perform an ankle pivot. I would have preferred if he had two-fisted hands. I would have preferred if his joints were a bit sturdier. But it's not the end of the world. So, as a totality, this lot is decent. 
We also have one more figurine, which I believe is Ultimate Gohan, the son of Goku, the grandson of Bardock. Here we have the Celestial Cerebral. Powerful Gohan, or Mystic Gohan, or Ultimate Gohan. This is quite a divine character. He lacks an ankle pivot, he lacks a diaphragm joint, he lacks two-fisted hands. Unlike the other figurines, he could ascend and descend his head. He can rotate his head. It's not relegated to a uh, disjoint. I think it's relegated to a ball joint. So, he has autonomy to move his head in nearly any way he see fit. He seems to be nearly po po he seems to be on the cusp of charging into the front lines. He seems to be poised for battle. He seems to be braced for combat. He's on the cusp of ascertaining victory against his adversaries. He's on the cusp of charging into the front lines. Uh, he's on the cusp of charging into the front lines and wreaking havoc against his adversaries. Perhaps that sounded a bit uncanny, unprecedented, and um, awkward in every facet. But I guess I'll revamp my aforementioned statement to say he's on the cusp of terminating. He's on the cusp of terminating anyone within his vicinity. I'll stop the semantics and move on. But here's Goku one more. T here's Gohan one more time. I want to flaunt him. So the box is now devoid of its contents. I have unboxed all the order. I've, I've unboxed all the contents of the order. In two separate videos, so you may want to check out the first part of the unboxing of Aviat to see that. You may want to feast your eyes on this video once again if it appeases you. I'm not sure if it did, but um, hopefully it appealed to you in some facet or another. Who knows? So once again, just to review, we have Gohan, Jace. Krillin, Radis, First Form Frieza, Piccolo, Birder, I also have Captain Ginyu, Bardock, Broly, Final Form Frieza, Super Saiyan, Goku, and interchangeable heads for Krillin. And I believe I have some appendages for Frieza that I can equip at my own discretion. So, not a bad figure green lot, not a bad action figure lot I should say. I love these Dragon Ball Z figures. Some were churned out by Bandai, others were produced by Urban Toys, others were produced by Jax Pacific. At least that's what I think. You can verify that for yourself. There's a plethora of versions of Goku Piccolo, Krillin, Frieza, so if you want the specific versions that I receive, then you have to perform your due diligence and conduct your own research to pinpoint which versions I have. I love this. I love this version of Piccolo. He just looks stoic. He looks like he's poised for battle. This Goku is just so puny. So here are some other figurines that I unboxed in the. First part of my unboxing of the Dragon Ball Z action figure lot. And of course we have Frieza, the diabolical Frieza. His unbridled might cannot be stopped. You cannot thwart Frieza's attacks. You cannot ward him off. You cannot keep him at bay. You cannot fend off against Frieza. Or I should say you can't fend against Frieza. What's the idiom? Who knows? Is it fend off? It doesn't matter. I need to stop dwelling on negligible details or under nonsense or semantics. Here's Captain Guinea once again. Here's Radis. These are just some of the figurines a part of the lot. Here's Frieza. So 
I guess it's not too shabby. I guess the figurines are not that shoddy. I guess they're not that abysmal. I guess they have some merit. Sure, they 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 are warranted a premium price of under five dollars. So I have no major qualms about the purchase and decision. At the totality, the lot is decent. However, if I only received the Barda, Goku, Broly, Captain Ginyu figurine, then I would have desisted from purchasing the lot for sixty dollars. But for under five dollars per figurine, I can't really complain. I just don't think that these miniature or small figurines warrant premium prices of over five dollars but of course your sentiments appertaining to these figurines may be disparate from mine perhaps you believe that they have more intrinsic and greater extrinsic value than i do but as far as i see these figurines are just mediocre best they embody insipid mediocrity that could have been improved in so many facets but i understand that manufacturers are trying to minimize their costs, they're, tr they're striving to nickel and dime their consumers, so we have to concede to the action figures that are churned out and the prices they command or forgo buying them. In this scenario, I bought I, in this scenario, I bought retro, older, antiquated figurines, but in the future, I'll likely desist from buying these older figurines and from buying newer figurines so they can't eminently appease me. So I, f I feel as though these figurines are mediocre at best. I love their deco, I love their hues, I love their aesthetics, I love their textures, I love their sculpts, but other than that, I mean, they're slacking in so many facets. They don't have ample points of articulation. They lack articulation in their elbow joints. They lack double jointed knees. They lack ankle pivots. They cannot always move their arms or legs inwards or outwards, they're relatively short in stature, they lack accessories, their joints are usually loose, sometimes you have one of their shoulders or one of their appendages uh, popping out of their body, it looks like it's on the cusp of becoming severed, I mean, you have issues with these figurines that cannot always be rectified, I mean, just look at this Frieza figurine, it's, um, leg just became severed. It looks like it was on the cusp of falling off and to my dismay it just fell off. Am I, dis am I experiencing distraught? Am I infuriated? Am I agitated? A little bit. So I'll just end the video here. As a bonus I'll just showcase all three of these Guinea Force members in one shot. Or in one frame. You could stare at them for billions of picoseconds. These are better than the miniature Dragon Ball Z figurines. It's too bad that they never made a gold doll action figure, but it is what it is. At least they have Raccoon, Bardor, Jace, and Captain Ginyu. Once again, I had these figurines in the past, but I had to relinquish them since one of my family members wouldn't let me store them in her mostly vacant backyard. But now, now I have required them. And in the past, when I owned all three of them, I never opened them. But at least they're open now, so at least I can utilize them. They have a pragmatic use. They can be flaunted on my shelves. They can be resold. They can also elicit happiness in my finite life. I'm jubilant, buoyant, and gratified when I take a gander at them. So it's always good to be be happy and to become distressed there was in one brief moment I just want to verify something all right never mind I just want to do check the Dragon Ball Z loss on eBay. Most are going for under $100 apparently, so if you want to pick up a Dragon Ball Z action figure lot, then by all means do so. They're not as exorbitantly priced as other action figure lots. I hope that you found this video to be enthralling and intriguing as well as insightful. Have a wonderful, marvelous day. Goodbye.